From the most trusted names in local news, KDPG Sunday Edition. Good morning and welcome to the KDPG Sunday Edition. I'm Ken Rice. The president said he had been the subject of, quote, abuse and slander, scarcely ever equaled in political history. Not President Donald Trump. Those were the words of President Ulysses S. Grant in his second inaugural address. Presidents in the media have long had a love-hate relationship, including even President George Washington, who disliked what he considered to be the partisan newspapers of the day. Of course, no one can doubt that the atmosphere between President Trump and most of today's media is uneasy at best. Last week, after delivering a sober televised address to the country about Afghanistan, reading from a teleprompter, President Trump went in another direction the next day when he launched another attack on the media. Here's correspondent Weijia Jiang. The very dishonest media, those people right up there with all the cameras. President Trump took aim at the media Tuesday night, spending more than 16 minutes claiming his response to the Charlottesville protests were misrepresented. They don't want to report that I spoke out forcefully against hatred, bigotry, and violence, and strongly condemned the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, and the KKK. The president went on to slam Arizona's two Republican senators. He laid out his frustrations with Senator John McCain for voting against the GOP health care plan. One vote away, I will not mention any names. And called out Senator Jeff Flake for being lax on border security. And nobody wants me to talk about your other senator who's weak on borders, weak on crime, so I won't talk about him. President Trump also threatened Congress to pass funding for his border wall and spelled out the consequences if it fails. Believe me, we have to close down our government. We're building that wall. Before the rally, Trump supporters were met with a wall of protesters angry over the president's agenda. After the event, Phoenix police used tear gas to disperse what they say was a small group of demonstrators who refused to leave. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, the White House. This morning on the KDPG Sunday edition, Presidents and the Press. A little later, we'll hear from D. Raja, chairman of the Republican Committee of Allegheny County, and Dr. Shannon Smithy, professor of political science at Westminster College in New Wilmington, PA. Right now, we welcome Maggie Patterson, professor of journalism at Duquesne University. She has experience as a newspaper reporter, writer, author. And Dr. Kristen Kuby Allen is a visiting assistant professor of political science at Duquesne's Graduate School of Liberal Arts. David Tribman, executive director, executive editor, excuse me, at the Post Gazette, joins us. Nice to have you here. Welcome to both of you. Um, national news: New York Times, Washington Post, uh, CNN, broadcast now. Fake news? Is it fake news, Maggie? These are media entities that have respect across the world, not just in the United States, and verification is what constitutes journalism and separates it from gossip. They are not engaged in the business of fake news. Um, I think that we have had a lot of widespread accusation of this. It's not only the president, it's reinforced by Sean Hannity and people on Fox News who are taking aim at the media. It's not a new phenomenon to try to shoot the messenger when you don't like the message. Is that is that your um, your opinion based on academic study, or is it because you're you're another coastal elite academic liberal? No, I I proudly wear a badge of enemy of the American people. <laughs> what about that? What about that enemy of the American people? And then he, the president on Tuesday night said that uh, he he thinks that reporters generally don't like America. Uh, have we have, let's back up a little. Have we heard this type of rhetoric before from other presidents? We have, right? Well, we've had a lot of animosity toward the press by every president because the job of the press is to keep a watchdog on power and to challenge the president. And no one who is in the, in the office is going to like that treatment. But that's what the way the democracy works. I don't think we've had anyone who took such specific aim almost to the point of encouraging violence against the press. What about that, Professor Allen? Is there something, what, what stands out to you about uh, Donald Trump's criticism and attacks on the media relative to other presidents? I think what we're seeing from President Trump is a much more direct and personal attack on not only the media in general, but also the individual reporters. I mean, he's calling out specific newspapers or news organizations that he doesn't like. And getting back to you know, the point about fake news, um, I think we have to remember that fake news isn't just something that we don't like. Fake news is actually put out for very specific purposes of trying to propagate incorrect information to achieve a certain goal. Um, 
So just because President Trump doesn't like some of the things that he's hearing doesn't mean they're any less true, right? We have very respected news sources. We have the New York Times, we have the Washington Post, organizations that have won many Pulitzer Prizes that they're recognized for upstanding journalism. And uh, what we're hearing from the president are more direct attacks on things that he just doesn't seem to agree with. But the, the crowd at a Trump rally boos the mention of the New York Times and they boo the mention of CNN. And in polling shows that while a large percentage or a larger percentage of Democrats might trust the news media, a larger percentage of Republicans do not. Is, is lasting damage being done to the integrity to the reputation of the major news media in this country? The press is, n is not popular. It was not popular during Watergate, which was perhaps the high point of the watchdog function of the press in this country. And um, I don't know that that's a mark of whether or not it's doing its job. I just want to remind everybody that, that uh, President uh, Jefferson said that the only thing that could be believed in the nation's newspapers were the advertisements that uh, Harry Truman went across the country in a train talking about the Time and the Newsweek and the Wall Street, referring to the Wall Street Journal. And then uh, Vice President Agnew in 1969 gave a, a preposterous speech, I must say, uh, talking about the nattering nabobs of negativity. Mm -hmm. That speech was written by um, William Sapphire, who within a decade would, win, would himself become a nattering nabob of uh, negativity and won a Pulitzer Prize. So. Uh so are you suggesting that this is not that out of the ordinary? Uh, the the um, genre is not out of the ordinary. The velocity, uh, the uh, fervor, uh, and a little bit of the uh, personal aspect, as the professors have, not have noted, are out of the ordinary. But um, you know, it was Richard Nixon who had a, 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 an enemies list, and most of my colleagues, uh, my elders, uh, as, a, as a reporter, were, um, were really upset if their names weren't on it. Is it working, uh, Professor Allen, is it working for President Trump politically? Because his overall approval ratings are low, 35%, uh, I think, in the latest Quinnipiac. He's been as low as 34, but he still remains popular with a large, large percentage of Republicans. So is this, is there a, a political tactic that he's exercising with the relentless attack on the news media? I think everything we're seeing from President Trump is pretty unique in terms of his relationship with the media, right? I mean, a President Nixon or a President Reagan didn't have the ability to directly tweet his followers. Um, mm -hmm. So what we're seeing from President Trump is an ability to directly get his message out to people without the filter, as he might think of it, as the news media. Um, presidents, you know, they wax and wane in their popularity. We, we gave President Trump his 100 days of... Uh, action and we didn't really see anything from him. Um, it's no surprise that the Republican base is still clinging on to him. Um, the Republican base isn't something that he's going to lose. Uh, but it's another thing to think about some of these pollings coming out right after an event like Charlottesville, where you have people having a, a visceral negative reaction to the statements that he did or did not make within a timely manner after that. So. Am I surprised that his polling is low? Not right now. Um, I, I just want to annotate that President Reagan never, never once attacked the press, nor did President Bush 41. Um, that cannot be said for Presidents uh, Clinton uh, and uh, Presidents Obama. And President Obama extremely aggressive in going after leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, with, le with legal action <laughs> without precedent. Right. Yeah. It, with the exception of uh, John Adams. Do you think that there is a confusion on the part of some of those, those people who are booing when President Trump mentions the New York Times, Washington Post, et cetera. Um, do you think there's a failure on the part of some to always distinguish between news reporting and commentary? Because they've become, they've become one and the same in many ways. You know, what is Don Lemon? Yeah. Is Don Lemon an opinion columnist, if we put it in a print reference, or is he a reporter? He's sort of a hybrid, right? Jake Tapper, these, there's a sort of a hybrid. What's Sean Hannity? Maybe he's purely commentary, but, but how do we deal with this? And when President Trump is criticizing the, the news media, is he criticizing reporting or is he criticizing pundits? He's not even saying news media. He just says the media. <clears throat> and I don't think there is such a thing. Um, what is the media? And this country has the most complex mass media system in the world, and we now have social media as well. So what does he mean by the media? Um, and using a singular verb, to indicate that there's one entity called the media. Um, I think that cable news is probably a lot of 
what the audiences are booing in this regard because they have become, I think, fairly revved up about issues and, and rather one-sided. If you look at CNN and switch to Fox, you feel you're in two different countries. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the cable channels have really evolved to the point where, uh, especially in the evening hours, and I guess they've always had a, 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 a bent toward more opinion in the evening hours, but instead of a 24 hours of comprehensive news coverage, it's 24 hours of one story reported yeah. for two minutes and then discussed for the balance of the hour. Right. Right. So that's not <clears throat> that's not journalism, is it? What is it? It's it's almost theater. It's almost um, okay. I'm going to root for my mm -hmm. my the analyst who has my point mm -hmm. of view. I'm going to root against the guy who is espousing the opposite point of view. You know what is that? And is that good for America? It's probably good for ratings. Well, I think um, it has I been. I think now. that I, I was watching CNN the other night when uh, after the Korean uh, threats, and it was revved up so high that Jeffrey Tubin, who was one of the faces on the commentary, said, let's ratchet this down a few notches. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, that television has an ability to do that, probably like no other medium. Is President Trump changing the way you teach political <laughs> science, changing the way you teach journalism? Yes. How so? Uh, there's, it's very hard to come up with a concrete plan. Um, you never know what you're going to be covering. And I think a part of it is because the students actually have a desire to, to learn and understand what's happening on a daily basis. Um, after the events of Charlottesville, you know, it brings up some uncomfortable questions for them. They're not quite sure who or where to turn to. So I see a lot of the class discussion might be off the topic of what we were scheduled to talk about because they, they have these questions and they're not exactly sure who to turn to for correct information. Um, so yes, it's, defini it's definitely thrown a ratchet in some of the plans for classes. Is that because there, there seems to be an attack on some of the, what have seemed like the foundational, um, you know, the institutions of our society? That's, that's part of the Trump appeal. People wanted him to go to Washington and, you know, be a bomb thrower. Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely the case. And I think that's also why there is controversy that we have, for all of our history, had an area, area of legitimate controversy about policy. And that fight can get for, pretty vicious. But um, he's an out, Trump is an outlier, and he's really begun to attack core values by going after John McCain and whether or not he's a hero, for example, attacking a judge for where his parents were born and, and questioning the, the judicial system. These are core shared consensus values that he has begun to attack and people feel very threatened by that. On that note, we'll have to leave this. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Dee Raja, Chair of the Republican Committee of Allegheny County, and Dr. Shannon Smithy of Westminster College. We'll be right back. <laughs> 